Hello folks, Junkie Rock 13 here. Everything vaping related, it's Junkie Rock 13. My real name is Ross Sanders. I'm here bringing you another little video review on the Z Max, the Smoke Tech Z Max. Now I did purchase this through a co-op and um, I have had nothing really bad to say about this device. I know that there has been some people that have had issues with their ZMAX. Now this is version 2. Version 2, different from version 1, is there is a setting on menu 8, menu number 8, that has two different settings. Now when I do the close up you'll be able to see that. But the difference between the two versions, or the two settings I should say, is one is RNS or ANS, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's the more accurate setting, and that's what they added to this version. And they were having complaints about when I vaped at 10 watts, I was not really getting 10 watts. Or if I vaped at 6 watts, I was not really getting 6 watts. I was actually getting 8 watts or 4 watts or whatever. The numbers were wonky, and they were not correct. But in the version 2, they also have the NEA setting on menu 8, which is the same performance that they got out of version 1. So if you want them wonky settings and you were used to them, used to them in accurate numbers, you can still have those settings. Um, but this is version 2. I have been using it in RNS or ANS, whatever you want to call it. Um, because the R looks like an A because with the digital readout, there's a three number digital readout, you cannot get an accurate R. But this is the Z Max. Let's take a close look at it and see what I think about it. Okay, folks, so here is the Z-Max. Um, this is how it's going to come to you from any of the vendors. It's going to come in one of these bags. If it is the Smoke Z-Max. Now, I know that there are another device made by Sagali, um, and it's called the Z-Max, but um, it is not the Smoke Tech Z-Max, and the, uh, the LCD will be different. It'll tell you what the um, model is. This is the stainless steel model right here. I'm going to open it up. And the device will be in uh, right there, uh, probably a plastic wrapped. Okay. Just take out the device. And there you go. There is the Z Max. Has a nice Smoke Tech logo on that side. And you have the Z Max logo on that side. Um, what is included with this device is you do have the battery cap for the 18650 okay so uh, straight out of the box you are not going to be able to use the stacked 18350s with this device because um, this cap does not support that okay this one is all stainless steel, and you'll notice that the ridges on the stainless steel are a little bit more deeper. And um, But other than the stainless steel version from the chrome or the black or whatever one you're buying, uh, I know they have black chrome now. Um, there will be a little, little differences in it. What else comes in the box is just a, a little pamphlet here. Let me flip that around. Okay. All right, ZMAX settings, it'll tell you what the uh, features are and what the limitations are of the device. And for instructions, these are pretty understandable. So if you do not know the menu system, if you're not familiar with the VMAX menu system, you will want to look into this. So I'm just gonna throw that off to the side and bring the device in, okay. 
All right, there we go. So you'll notice some little round pits into the bottom of right there. And also the same ones that are on the top right there. Now the feel of this device is pretty nice. It is, has a solid, now this is the stainless steel I'm talking about. It has a nice solid weight to it. Um, the threads are pretty decent. Um, actually better than I have had with uh, the VMAX, but it, they're pretty nice. There are some vent holes on the bottom, four little tiny holes with a uh, larger one in the center. I hate the light, it always glares. All right, let me get over here. Um, so there is, if you have any venting from uh, batteries, there is some safety features for that. Up on top, there is a, a very deep um, drip well, if you want to call it that. It does work really good with. But anyhow, if you want to use like a Stardust or a... Uh, uh, kangaroo t3 or t2 or something like that that has the skirt on the bottom you can put it on there and it does go on okay now there is no threading so if you have any devices that have the outside threading on the skirt there is no threading on there now there have been some actually you know what let me clean that little connection in there i do have a little juice in the connection there. Grab my trusty play. Probably didn't get it all, but that's okay. Um, there have been some complaints about the connection in the ZMAX. That little center post in there um, is insulated with like a rubber or silicone or something. And people have been complaining. I have had no issue with this, so this is not my experience. But they have been complaining that when, if you are a constant um, person that takes tanks off, switches tanks, switches Addy's Cardos, and they're all different sizes, or the, the positive post is different lengths, um, they have been crushing that in there. And uh, when that happens, the menu system acts wonky. And so I have not experienced that, but people have. All right, so I'm just going to show you. Um, let me just talk about the button real quick. The button is a nice little clicky plastic button. It's not a bad button. I actually like it. It feels the same way as the um, VMAX. I'm just going to bring in the VMAX for one second just to show you a comparison. This is a chrome version VMAX. You can notice the similarities. Now the VMAX has the little squiggly lines on the um, the battery tube connector right there and this one has the little pits but they look very similar um, except for the little the shine because this is the chrome and this is the stainless steel but um, the button on the VMAX seems to be a little bit more plasticky or a different grade of plastic I'm not sure exactly maybe it's just the um, in the chrome from the stainless but um the weight are pretty much the same um, and the menus are not that far off. What I'm going to do is bring in the 18350 battery end. Now with the 18350 you can notice it's a little bit longer. Um, it does still have the little pitted holes in it. This will allow you to use two 18350s. Okay. Now the two 18350s will be at that battery end and the 18650 is with this. Now the biggest complaint that I've been hearing about this, and like I said, this is not my experience, but people have been saying that when using this battery end with an 18650, it has been rather tight. Let me show you how tight it is. Okay, you notice that is pushing the spring right there so I have to push down pretty hard to catch and turn now what that has been doing okay inside you'll notice the board in there 
and in the center that little round piece is the positive post now that positive post has been getting pushed in and the solder has been breaking um, I have not experienced any issues whatsoever but what people have been suggesting is because with an 18650 with this end it works just as well you'll notice that it fired up and sometimes depending on the 18650 length battery um, there might be a tiny rattle but I really like to use the dual 18350s. Now, I do not like stacking batteries. I really don't. But if you are going to stack batteries, please um, make sure you use, you know, start off with a brand new set of 18350s. Um, this is my suggestion, and it has been working very well for me. Use a brand new set number them keep the set together make sure you alternate so this time put them in one and two like that the next time you do it put it in two and one and just keep on rotating every time you charge them and put them back in the device so I did use two and one last time so I will use one and two this time Okay, now it is a little, not as much, it's tight with the dual A3, 18350s, but not as tight as the 18650 is with their um, end. So I'm going to get into the menu system. Now, I know the light has been blocking. Okay. I hope this is, comes out good. I'm going to try to get it in a little darker portion right there. Okay, let me just bring this in just a hair. See that light? You can't really see it that well. So I'm going to bring it over here in this part of the camera. Okay, so the, the menu system starts off like this. Okay, when you hit three times. Let me start that over again. One, two, no wait, one, two, three. Okay, and it will go to one. That's menu number one. And it says PU, meaning power up. One, two, three, power up. And you can see it is eight watts. And I can bring it up in 0.5 increments all the way to 15 watts. And once it hits 15, it will round robin back down to 3 watts and continue to go up. Now I'm going to bring it up to 6.5 just for purposes of the video. Now menu number 2 which is PD which is power down is the same thing as the first menu but it will bring the wattage down okay and once it hits the 3 it will round robin again. Okay now we're going to go to menu number three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and that is S O, and it turns right away and it looks like there's an S with an on. Okay, so let's show you what that is. It is on the on position. Now we're going to go back to it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, S on, and I'm going to click it to off. Okay, now what this is, is turning the device into the off position. So now when I fire, I am getting three little dashes there. Okay, and what that is, is just saying that the device is off. So in order to turn it back on, I will have to go back to that menu. One, two, three, four, five, six. S off, click it to S on. So now when I fire, it will be... Um, in the on position. So now we're going to go to menu four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it looks like a VC. And you'll notice that there is an 8.0 V. Okay, that is telling you how much power is in your batteries. Because there are two batteries in here, it is showing me 8 volts. If I just had one 18650 in there, 
it would actually be saying um, 3.5 to like 4.2. But because there are two batteries, it is showing you a combined total of both batteries and the voltage that you are working with. So we will go to the next menu. One, two, oh, wait a minute. Let me just see something. Okay. Right, I'm, I'm sorry. I was thinking of something. Okay, we're gonna go to menu number five now. DS. Now there's a DO, a DA, and a DV. Okay, this is when you fire your button, numbers show up if you have it set this way. Right now, it's telling me that I have 8.0 volts left in my batteries. And that is because of the setting on number 5 is DS. That's telling me my batteries, or DV, excuse me. Let's get back there. I waited too long to hit it. Okay. Now, DV, DO or DA, okay? These settings right here, all three of these settings, are what I can see when I hit the fire button. So let's put it on DO, and when I hit the fire button now, it is showing me 13P, okay? Now if you'll notice, 13P, when I go to setting number one, that I do have it set at 13 watts. So this is just showing me that I have it set at 13 watts. We'll go back to number five again. And switch it to DA. Now DA is, I'm getting 9.9. .9 because I'm, the reason why I'm getting 9.9 .9 is because I do not have anything attached to the device. This has a resistance reader of whatever is attached to the device. I'm just attaching a Bogue cartomizer right now. It is like a uh, low resistant Bogue cartomizer on an evolution tank. I will go back. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just show you what it's reading right now. Let me turn it back. So when I hit the fire button now, you'll notice that there is 2.1. So that is the resistance of the atomizer or cartomizer or whatever device, a clear or rebuildable that you have on there that will tell you the ohm setting of it. So when we go back to setting five, we, get, we have DA, DU, or V, and DO. DO, remember, is the wattage that we're working with. Number five again. The DA is the atomizer and the DV is working with how many volts are in the batteries. So let's go to number six. Now number six reads LO on or L off. Okay, now when we have it in the off position, and we hit the fire button, you'll notice that the voltage of the batteries is not coming up now. So that's basically your LED, meaning on or off. So on number six, you can turn your LED off or on. When it's in the on position, you'll notice that it comes back on, okay? Now, when we go to the next setting, number seven, is PO or VO. Now when there is VO, this setting right now is, actually let me make sure of this. Okay, I just had a brain lapse right now and forgot what number seven was for one second. Okay, <laughs> it is the um, determining, <laughs> I can't believe I forgot, I got one of them confused, but number seven is if you want to run in voltage or in wattage. Okay, if you like to uh, run your device like a regular VMAX, you would like to have it in, um, let me see right here, number one. This is at 13 watts, okay? So we're gonna go to number seven and see what we are running it in. 
and it is in PO. When you go to VO, now that's uh, voltage. Okay, so when we go to setting one, it is at three volts, and I can move this up in increments of 0.1 voltage all the way to six, and then once I reach six, it will round robin to three again. So number seven is whether if you want to run it in voltage or wattage. Um, your determination. This is a nice thing because it is a VV or a VW device. Now we're going to just go to the last setting, which is eight. And the eight is the most interesting. RNS or NEA. Okay, NEA. The, because this is the version 2 v, ZMAX, excuse me. This has the most um, accurate number reading uh, compared to the version 1. The version 1 numbers with um, whether you had it at like 10 watts. If you were running your device at 10 watts on version 1, the device was not accurate. You were actually running it more than 10 watts. They revamped it with, number, with version 2 and on version 2 when you run this in menu 8 to the ANS or RNS, that is the most accurate reading. If you ran it in the other setting, which is the NEA setting, you are actually running it in the inaccurate reading, which is the ver version 1 reading. I don't know why you would want to use an inaccurate reading, but if you have a version 1 and you're comfortable with vaping it at 5 watts or 6 watts or whatever you were comfortable vaping it at, you can still find that setting on the version 2. So those are the menu options of the ZMAX. We are going to show you how it vapes and see what I think about it. Alrighty folks. There's the close-up of the Z-Max. Okay, now, like I said, there have been some people in the forums that have been having issues with the Z-Max. I think the biggest issue is with the battery end. Um, because this is a shorter uh, battery end, and it's used primarily for the 18650, because it is so tight, because of this, different variations of sizes in the 18650s batteries, um, they have been pushing it in too hard and breaking the uh, weld on the positive post in there, pushing it up too hard. Um, but what I have found is because the 18350 battery end works well with the 18650 battery, um, I advise you, if you do have a ZMAX or if you are buying a ZMAX, get the 18350 um, battery end. Even if you're not going to be stacking 18350s, which I like to do and I'll tell you why. Um, it works with the 18650, so you, this battery end works with both. They should have just made it with this battery end. And I don't know why they gave you this, I guess the buy another part but anyhow the reason why I use the two 18350s I did not go into the detailed numbers of the wattage and voltage um, how accurate they are because there have been other reviewers like Phil Basardo um, there's been a few people that are electronics and electronic engineers I don't claim to be none of them guys um, Phil Basardo has equipment that I don't have to check the voltage and wattage. Um, so I am gonna link you to his video to see the accurate numbers that he got from testing on this device. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I really do like the ZMAX. Uh, it has been not my first variable wattage device, but um, I like variable wattage. Now people are gonna ask what is variable wattage? Why do I need it? Why would I want it? Okay, you can go out and get yourself a VMAX and get variable voltage. Now, variable voltage, you can usually set from 3 volts up to 6. Some are different. Some go from 3 up to 5. Some 
3 up to 4.8. But anyhow, difference with variable voltage, um, you can set your atomizer or cartomizer to the taste that you like. Now, because atomizers and cartomizers all have different resistance settings, uh, meaning some are standard, some are low resistance, and even two low resistant cartomizers, some will be 2.0, some might be 1.8. And if you want the same setting, uh, because I know I put a low resistant cartomizer on here and had it set at uh, 4 volts, and I took another low resistant cartomizer and put it on there and had it set at 4 volts, but the taste was different. It started burning the cartomizer. That is because the resistance in the cartomizer are different, or the different juice that you're using, or even the different brand cartomizer. But when you're using wattage, that will give you the same amount of heat no matter what resistant you put on here. If I put a 4 ohm resistant cartomizer or atomizer on here, or a 1.5 atomizer or cartomizer on here, and I set it to 7 watts, I'm going to get 7 watts every single vape. Now watts is determined by the voltage and the resistance and the amps and, and it's I'm not going to get into the math behind Ohm's law and everything but um, wattage is your outcome and wattage is what everybody vapes. Even when you're vaping on a variable voltage device, you still have your outcome as how many watts you get. Um, that being said, wattage is a more stable um, vape for vapors. Um, you can set it and forget it type thing. Uh, I set mine usually around 8, 8.5, sometimes 9. And I just vape, no matter what I put on here, I'm always getting 8.5 watts or 9 watts. And that's really nice. I like that. Version 2 ZMAX has been a really pleasure for me. It's not an expensive variable wattage device. There are others out there like the Darwin or like the uh, J-Box, which has the DNA from Evolve in it. Um, and those are all nice devices. This is less expensive, um, and it works. I know the build quality is not perfect, um, but it is what it is. I like it with the 18350 battery end, and I have had no problems with it. Now the issue with the connector post in there getting smashed down with the different cartomizers or atomizers. A way that you can work around that is by taking a 510 to 510 adapter and putting it in there, leaving it in there, and then when you remove your tanks and put new atomizers or cartomizers on there, you leave that connector in there and you just use that. That has been working for some people and I haven't had an issue. I usually don't crank down on my atomizers or cartomizers that I put on here or rebuildables, so I'm not really smashing that little rubber piece in the post. But let me just show you a couple vapes. And it's very nice. Let me just show you what my setting or tell you what my settings are I have it at 9 watts and I have a <clears throat> 2.1 um, ohm cartomizer on here but that is not gonna matter um, even if I had a 4 point ohm cartomizer on there I'm still gonna get 9 watts I just have some ectoplasma from uh, Juicy Vapor in here in my little evolution tank. And I really do like the way this vapes. The one issue that I find with this thing is it like stutters. When it when you're pushing the power, it goes something like Let me see if you could 
Let me see if you can hear that. I don't know if you can hear it, but the vape on a Z-Max does that. It goes brrrr. And that is basically the, um, the pulse width modulation thing. I, I'm assuming that it goes brrrr and it goes up and down. I'm not an electronic engineer and I don't claim to be one. But I'm assuming that's what it is. I've never gotten that with the VMAX or anything other devices that use that. But this device does it. I'm not sure if that's with all ZMAXs. But mine has been doing that. And this is the only one that I have vaped off of as far as ZMAXs. Let me take a couple more vapes and then we're going to close this up. I'm going to tell you exactly whether I think you should get one or not. It vapes really nice, consistent, the button is never misfired. It works pretty good. Now, whether you should buy a ZMAX or not is solely up to you. If you are happy with what you're vaping on, please, you know, that's, that's, it works for you, so keep it and don't change it. And that's the way I always feel. Um, in my opinion, the ZMAX is a good buy. It is not that expensive compared to other devices. Um, I do like it, but I have had no problems with the Z-Max. I like it. Um, if you want to try one out yourself, there are many vendors out there. I know Electronic Sticks has them. Um, and let me think of who else right now. Um, I can't think of them any off the hand. Uh, I know Mad Vapes has a Z-Max and they also have their own version of the Z-Max and they have one that's in clear. I have not tried one of those but um, the Z-Max folks, check them out if you like them, if you want to. I like mine. Alright folks, take care. Make sure you subscribe above comment down below and please if um if you see a new vapor in need or needs to have any questions answered please give them a hand uh, that's what we, we were all new vapors once and i really 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 feel strongly about helping out the new guy all right folks take care and keep vaping